Hello, this is your guide for Wednesday, June 17th in Work Packet 6. Please write your name here so I know who did the work. At the end of the video on Epic Books, we will listen to a fiction book about Sporky, a little spork who's not sure if he's a fork or a spoon. But first, let's do our work and let's practice the letter L. L. Color the pictures and trace the letters. So this is uppercase L and lowercase L. So with your pencil, we'll start up here. This word is ladybug. L A D Y B U G ladybug and then here is lemon l e m oops so i'll use my eraser l e m o n lemon and here is a leg l e g and this whole big picture is a lion, the face of a lion. L I O N. This is a lollipop. L O L L I P O P. Lollipop, like a sucker. And here is a lamb. L A M B. A lamb, I believe, is a baby sheep. And leaf. L E A F. The leaf fell off the tree. And now we'll practice uppercase L. So start at the top, down, turn the corner, top, down, turn right, top, down, turn, top, down, turn, top, down, turn. Finish the rest of that line. And then lowercase L, really easy. You just go top to bottom, top to bottom. Okay, and please finish those lines. Okay, let's move on to our daily language review. Daily language review. Read the word that helps tell where. Where. And the word is beyond. So we're going to practice using the word beyond. Write beyond in each sentence, then read the sentence. Number one, the boat is beyond the whale. Because you see this boy is on the beach, here's a whale, and then the boat is farther away. It's beyond. That's what it means. Okay, so with your pencil in the blank, the boat is beyond. Make sure Y goes under the line. Beyond the whale. Number two, the rainbow is beyond. The tree. So this girl's looking at the tree and the rainbow is way back here. It's beyond. Look at the picture. Use beyond to write a sentence. So I see a boy and he's looking at maybe the farm or maybe he's looking at some cows on the on the hill. And why don't we say he's looking at the cows beyond the farm? Let's give him a name too. How about how about we call him Stu? Stu sees cows beyond the house. We'll just call it a house. And period. Stu sees cows beyond the house. Good. Okay, let's move on to story time. A day to play. Please read the story and answer the questions. And we'll see 
A and Y come together in lots of these words. And like in day, may, play, and gray. So A, 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 A. It sounds like A. Okay. Now let's look at the picture. I see clouds and the sun. Looks like it's a nice day outside. Question number one. What month was it in a day to play? Number two, what did Lily want? Number three, when Lily was inside, what did she play with? Okay, let's read it. A day to play. It was a nice day in May. Lily wanted to play outside. Oh no, she said. The sky looked gray. Lily wanted the clouds to go away. She had to stay inside and play. She got a tray and played with clay. Soon Lily could see the sun's rays. She ran outside and started to play. Question one. What month was it in a day to play? Let's see. It was a nice day in May. January, February, March, April, May. And period. Number two, what did Lily want? Lily wanted to play outside. So she wanted to play outside. And because it's the beginning of our answer, it'll be uppercase. To play. Oops. <laughs> Sorry about the squeak. To play out. Oh, so sorry. To play outside, period. Number three, when Lily was inside, what did she play with? So the sky looked gray. She wanted the clouds to go away. She had to stay inside and play. She got a tray and played with clay. So what did she play with? Clay. And just for fun and for more detail, we'll say clay on uh, what was it on? A tray. Period. Okay. Let's do one more thing because I noticed there's lots and lots of words that end with A-Y. So why don't we try to find them all? I'll use red. So if a word ends with A-Y, we'll put a line underneath it. So day ends with A-Y. May play, gray, away, stay, play, tray, clay, raise. Doesn't end, but that counts. She ran outside and started to play. So that's a lot. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven words with a y. Cool. So you can see there's lots of words that we say that have that a sound inside of it. So it's good to know how to pronounce it. A, a, a. Okay. Okay. Let's move on to math. So yesterday we were talking about counting money and now we're going to combine that with our estimating skills. Remember estimating is like making a guess, but an educated guess. It's going to be very close. So estimation and counting money. Estimate and find the exact amount of money each child has. Then answer the questions. Okay. So you see we have Jason, Elaine, Kevin, Sally, and Bruce. And down here we see estimate, like a guess, and actual. We count it all. So let's start with Jason. Let's estimate how many dollars and cents he has. Okay, so he's got five and a toonie, a loonie, one, two, three, three quarters three dimes and a penny. 
So for me, looking at that, it kind of looks like it'll be eh, about $9 and 25 cents. Okay, and now let's get the actual amount. We will count what he's got. So he's got, I'm going to cross it out once I uh, write it down. So he has $5, that's one, and then he has $2, that's two, and then he has $1. Okay, let's add these ones up first. So it's all zeros all the way down, and then 5 plus 2 equals 3, 5, sorry, 5 plus 2 equals 7, 7 plus 1 equals 8. So, so far he has $8. Now he's got 25, 25, 25. Let's use skip counting. 25, 50, 75. So $0, 75 cents plus... 10, 20, 30 cents, zero dollars, 30 cents, plus, don't forget the little penny, zero dollars and one cent. So five plus zero plus one equals six, seven plus three equals 10, drop the decimal, carry the one, drop it down, one dollar and six cents, plus this eight dollars, plus one dollar and six cents, Six zero. Drop the decimal. Nine. So the actual amount is nine dollars and six cents. So we actually don't need to put the zero there. We can just say six. So we we're pretty close. A little above, but very close. So we guessed nine dollars twenty-five cents, and we counted nine dollars and six cents. Okay, I'm gonna do one more for you. And then I want you to try the rest of the page by yourself, okay? So we did Jason. Now let's take a look at Elaine right here. So the next one. So first thing we'll do is estimate. Estimate. She has toonies. One, two, three, four toonies. A quarter. One, two, three, four dimes. And one, two, three, four pennies. So that looks like a little bit less than Jason had. I think I will say seven dollars. Seven dollars. Now we have to write dollars. And maybe fifty cents. Okay, now we're gonna add it up over here. So toonies. Let's use our skip counting. Two, four, six, eight dollars you see skip counting it saved us a lot of time we don't have to add we'll skip count because we know they're all twos okay so the toonies are done and plus 25 cents so zero dollars 25 cents plus how many dimes 10 20 30 40. that's why i keep telling you skip counting multiplication counting money Super important. And then pennies. One, two, three, four cents. Like this. Now I'll add it up. Zero plus five equals five. Five plus zero equals five. Five plus four equals nine. Zero plus two equals two. Two plus four equals six. Six plus zero equals six. Drop the decimal. Eight plus zero, zero, zero. Still eight. So it is eight dollars. and 69 cents and we said seven dollars fifty cents so we we're off by a dollar and 19 cents so not as close as the first one but still not a bad estimate okay i want you to count kevin sally and bruce's money estimate and then count it and then for questions six and seven you need to use these numbers that you find to answer these questions. Six, who has the most money? So the highest amount of money. And seven, who has the least money? So the lowest amount. And to answer that, you need to count all the money first. Okay? Try your best. Use your skip counting. Believe me. 
That's why it's really good to know how to skip count by 10 and 25 because we use those that money all the time. 10 is a dime. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, a dollar, a dollar, 10, 20, 30, 40. And 25 cents is a quarter. 25, 50, 75, $1, 125, 150, 175, $2, 225, 250, 275, $3, 325. Okay. So now it's time for a word problem. Word problem. I'm thinking of three consecutive numbers. For example, 1, 2, 3, or 31, 32, 33. So numbers that come 1, 2, 3, right after each other, three in a row. Their sum is 150. So they equal 150. What are the numbers? Use the box below to show your work. OK. So you might be thinking, why not 50? 51 and 52. Seems like it would make sense. Start in the ones place. 0 plus 1 equals 1. 1 plus 2 equals 3. 5 plus 5 equals 10. 10 plus 5 equals 15. So we got 153, but we're looking for 150. So we're very close, but we need to have smaller numbers. So what if we were to take away 3 from 50? So that would... 50 take away 3. I know what it is, but just to help you figure it out. 50 take away 3. Start in the ones place. 0 take away 3. Can't do it. Borrow from 5. Turns to 4. 0 turns to 10. 10 take away 3. 10 take away 1, 2, 3. 7. Drop the 4. So 47. Now we'll go in order. Plus 48. Plus 49. Do you think that's going to be 150? 7 plus 8 equals 15. 15 plus 9 equals 24. 2, 6, 10, 14. Oh no, it's too small. So we know we're closing in on it. We're close. But that's not quite what we needed. How about 1 less? 50 take away 1. So 49 plus 50 plus 51. 9 plus 0 equals 9. 9 plus 1 equals 10. Carry the 1. 1 plus 4 equals 5. 5, 10, 15. Hey! That's what we wanted. And now to show that we really know the answer, we'll do it like this. 49, comma, 50, comma, 51. And then put a nice cloud, a nice bubble around it. So these three numbers in a row, when you add them, it equals 150. Pretty cool, huh? OK, number of the day. And then we will listen to epic books. I think you're really going to like this book today. It's pretty funny. So what year is it right now? It is 2020. And that's also our number. So let's break down 2020. In the thousands place, you have two. Two thousands, one, two of these big blocks. That will equal 2,000. And in the hundreds place, zero. So of course, it's still zero down here. Tens place, two. So we have 1, 2, 10 blocks. That equals 20. And in the 1s, 0. And that's still going to be 0. So we have a 2 in the 1,000s place, a 0 in the 100s, a 2 in the 10s, and a 0 in the 1s. 2020. OK, one more. So the 1s place will go up by 1. 2, 0, 2. What's 1 more than 0? It's 1. 2021. That's next year. One less. So we need to take one away. What year was it last year? It was 2019. Now it's one less. Is it odd or even? 
odd numbers end with 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9. Even numbers end with 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. Our number ends with a 0, so put a check mark in even. Plus 10. So now the tens place is going to go up by 1. So 2, 0, instead of 2, we'll have a 3. 20, 30. How old are you going to be in 2030? I know some of you are 10 years old right now. So in 2030, you're going to be 20 years old. Wow. Take away 10. So now the tens place goes down by 1. 20, 10. Some of you were born in that year. Some of you weren't even alive in 2010. Okay, place value. Thousands place, two, hundreds, zero, tens, two, ones, zero. Round to the nearest hundred. So we can either go to 2000 or go to the future, 2100. And if your number is 2050 or more, you're going to go up to 2100. But 2020 is less, so we go down to 2000. I remember the year 2000. It was pretty interesting. I think I was nine years old. Good times. Record on a number line. Between 0 and 10,000, in the middle is 5,000. Between 0 and 5,000, in the middle, 2,500. Pretty close to 2020, so let's just drop it back, eh, maybe here. 2020, put a bubble on it, good. What my numbers look like using base tens. So we already know we need one, two thousands, because if we're looking at our place value, two thousands, how many hundreds? None, so we don't touch it. How many tens? Two, one, two. Bubble, how many zero, how many ones? Zero, don't touch it. So we have 2,000 blocks and 210 blocks. That's it. Record a number pattern starting at your number. 2020. Let's go up by 5. So we're skip counting by 5. 2020, 2025, 2030, 2035, 2040, 2045. So in 2045, if you're 10 years old right now, in 2045, you will be 25 plus 10, you will be 35 years old. Wow. And for me, I'm 28 plus 25, I will be 53. Oh, old man, me old man. Hey, I look forward to old age. My number in words, 2020. So actually, when we say it correctly, it'll be 2020. So 2020. When you say 2020, that's just kind of when you're having a conversation with somebody. But when we write it, you want to write it correctly. Okay, good work today. Let's take a break and listen to a lovely story about a spork. Spork, written by Keo McClear, illustrated by Isabel Arsenault. Spork was neither spoon nor fork, but a bit of both. He had a mum and a dad who both thought he was perfect just the way he was. But Spork stuck out. In his kitchen, forks were forks and spoons were spoons. Cutlery customs were followed closely. Mixing was uncommon. Naturally, there were rule breakers, knives who loved chopsticks, tongs who married forks, but such families were unusual. One day after the billionth time he was asked, what are you anyway? And the zillionth time he was passed over when the table was being set, Spork sighed and thought, it must be easier to be a single thing. And he decided he'd try to pick just one thing to be. 
He thought he should start by fixing his head. He put on a bowler hat to look more spoonish, but the forks thought he was too round. Then he made a paper crown to look more forkish, but the spoons thought he was too pointy. Spork wondered if there were other lonely creatures out there with no matching kind who never got chosen to be at the table. At dinner time, he watched from the drawer while the spoons played pea hockey and skillfully balanced boiled eggs. He sat off to the side while the forks raked fancy patterns in the mashed potatoes and twirled noodles around in complicated circles like rhythmic gymnasts. And at the end of this and every other meal, Spork looked on while the others enjoyed a super bubbly bath in the sink. Until one morning, a messy thing arrived. This messy thing had obviously never heard of cutlery customs or table manners. No, this messy thing smeared and spilled and flung and clumped and dripped without a care. Wait, said the forks, but the messy thing did not wait. Careful, said the spoons, but the messy thing was not careful. Help, said the forks, while the messy thing continued to slop and splatter. Quick, said the spoons. Now, a fork may be good for poking and picking, and a spoon may be fine for scooping and stirring, but this messy thing with its slurpy and clumpy half-finished food bits needed something else, something that could do all sorts of things at once, something flexible and easy to hold. Something that was neither spoon nor fork, but a bit of both. That's when Spork landed. The messy thing saw Spork and immediately stopped and gurgled. It grabbed Spork and held him motionless in its fist. It tapped him once and let out a cheerful shriek. It wagged Spork excitedly up and down. And that's how Spork finally and happily found his way to the table. Just a bit round, just a bit pointy, just right. Aw, good for Sporky. Finish the book. Oh, we leveled up. Level nine. Nice. So, I hope you like that book. And maybe we'll listen to another fiction story tomorrow. Fiction means it's like a made-up story. Someone came up with it. Not like a science book. It's just a story for fun. But you can still learn things. Okay. So, that was Wednesday. And that means we only have Thursday and Friday left for homework. So, if you've made it this far and you're watching this video and doing your work, Great job. Appreciate it. So now take a break, have a glass of water, maybe get some fresh air. And I will see you tomorrow for Thursday's video. Bye-bye.